Hi, I'm Chris from AirWindows, and I have an update for you this week. I have successfully got a pump and pumped the dirty laundry water out of my broken washing machine for the first time in like two weeks, and I will be able to do laundry... Oh, plugins! You're looking for plugins. Well, I have an update for that as well. This is a little thing called TPDF Dither. And the idea here is this is much like the stuff I've been putting out recently, but this is the AirWindows TPDF Dither. So rather than doing weird experiments and stuff, you can hear what normal Dither would sound like under the same circumstances. And this might help as far as comparing things against, you know, not just another Dither or uh, Dark I don't think TPDF is going to go into monitoring because I'm going to be using one of my fancy ones for that. But this is for if you wanted to do some bit crushing or just use TPDF normally. And here's how that works. We have got our audio. I've turned it down a little bit with uh, word length shift gain. And it defaults to 24 bit but you can also set it to 16-bit and make CDs out of the output of Logic because it's going to give you effectively 16-bit output that you then save to a 16-bit file. Now the thing about this version of TPDF is it's a little tiny bit unusual and uh, that's worth talking about slightly. I had uh, Bob Olson going, I like this better than other TPDFs and that shouldn't be happening. What's going on? Also, it seems to act weird. Turns out the way that it's adding and subtracting um, dither sources, random noise sources, it averages out to half a bit of offset. So it does a DC offset of half a bit on the 16th bit. And that's why it sounds differently, is the way that it works, its bottom level is covering three bits instead of only two. That's why it does what it does. That's why it may, to some people, uh, I, I wouldn't press Bob as to whether he still feels that way. I just know that that came up, that he was like, why does this sound different? I like it better, but it's not supposed to sound different. And I did work out why. And if you'd like to use a regulation TPDF dither, well, this is kind of like a regulation TPDF dither. It has that tiny amount of offset, but that means its baseline covers three values instead of only two, while still being the same amplitude. And, of course, you can do this. Dither doesn't gate its noise floor. What you're hearing here is a the amplitude of a noise floor with the audio completely buried under the noise. That's what dither normally does. And you'll find that as I move it around, It's covering stuff up, kind of, but you can still sort of hear what's going on back there because a noise floor is not a fixed limit of what you can listen to. Like you can hear a little bit of that synthesizer solo, the one here. Now keep listening to it. See? A noise floor is not a fixed barrier to being able to hear. You're stable, still able to hear a little bit of what's going on underneath this. That's what TPDF is supposed to do. 
Now in the same settings, my other dithers will either be giving you uh, a fairly clear picture of what's going on, or will have cut out. And raw truncation will blast you with a weird distorted version of uh, what that signal is. By TPDF, you can kind of gently move between relatively full resolution, this is still 16 bit, and much lower. And if we start at 24, we can pick what sounds like it might be around one bit of depth and oh, actually we did that the opposite direction we want to do it from one bit of depth around here which I'm just going to have to wing because I have no real way of telling and then nicely TPDF to 38 bit Now it sounds a little boxy, it sounds a little shallow, but that's fine. This is, after all, like regulation dither. And of course you can still hear, to some extent, what's going on many dB below the noise floor. Now if that noise was also your signal, there would be even more reason to dither correctly so that you'd be able to pick out all of the things instead of messing with them. Okay, so you can break this fairly easily by dithering it again or by truncating it again improperly and producing uh, artifacts that drown out this faint audio back there. But you can still hear it. So on that note, let me uh, bounce back to a proper image of me. It is actually quite true that I only just got um, my broken washing machine bailed out using a pump. I actually went through two different pumps. If you uh, go to the hardware store and find those little pumps that are supposed to run on the end of a drill, don't even bother because it's a complete waste. I got one and it was a disaster and would not work. And the one that I got, which was called a diaphragm pump, and it's considerably more expensive, but I managed it. Um, that didn't work properly until I sealed up the uh, hoses and things really well to not let any air get into it. Air in, in a pump for pumping out water is kind of like dither in digital audio. Uh, you'd be surprised at how little can ruin your day. Uh, or actually the lack of dither in digital audio. You'd be surprised at how little can just ruin your day. But given the incredible hotness of the days and given the amount of stuff that I'm dealing with as far as taking care of all that, I have a sequence of plugins, granted they're dithers, but I have a sequence of plugins that are still coming out, so I'm not going to have to miss any weeks, and I'm getting back into being able to do music. And I think, and it's no promises for this week, this week might still be kind of insane, I think I have a rig now that will let me live stream VCV rack. And there's somebody who is beginning to port the Air Windows plugins to VCV rack, which I as yet cannot do. And I tried it out. And I ran some stuff into console to the output. And I used MV because MV is in VCV rack now on the rack windows project. It should be available even as I speak. And I made MV feedback into itself and made horrible noises and was well satisfied. So, yeah, yeah, I am going to start fooling with that rather than just only fooling with, you know, hardware synthesizer. That is still my baseline. That is still 
what I go by and I'm sort of patiently building up that scenario until I can, I'm, I'm learning things like how to not make music that people say is so bad that it's good. Turns out the reason anybody said that in the first place was because I was playing very confusingly and had about five different tempos going at the same time and it was unhearable music. So the fellow was right, but uh, that's not to say I can't learn from things. And I hope to also bring some of the stuff, including the crazy unhearable stuff that I was doing in, in hardware, into VCV Rack. And when I do that, I'll have a microphone up and we'll be talking with people about what I'm doing. Because it's not going to be so much performing music that I expect is going to be listener music. It'll be more like, how do you do this kind of stuff? How do you decide how to arrange a modular system? How do you make sounds? How do you do FM synthesis? How do you organize things where you're doing sort of generative music? And VCV Rack has the capacity to do lots of that kind of stuff and it's free and open source. And so is my plugins and so are the plugins that are, are Rack Windows plugins that are getting ported to VCV Rack. So now you can play along with the same toys. And that makes me very happy. So on that note, I uh, will say, talk to you. Uh, I'm going to be showing up and doing my usual Monday live stream. And as for the things going on in the next week, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing this, this rack live streaming thing immediately next week, but it is in the cards. I'm getting it ready to go. So I will talk to you all later. Oh, yeah. This is all paid for by Patreon. It's a pretty quickly fine thing. Although if your washing machine broke or indeed if you are struggling to find quarters for the laundromat because you're trying to give them to me, then no, don't give them to me. Go to the laundromat first. If you've got quarters left over, then you can give them to me. Do not support my Patreon unless you can afford to. But when you do, uh, nice things happen. So I'll try to keep living up to it. And on that note, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.